YouTube channel. So, and a big welcome to you as you join us today. And uh, if you're wherever you are online, we welcome you and we pray that God will touch you and you might know his presence this morning. So we're going to pray together now. Let's come to God in prayer. Our Father God, in the stillness of this moment, before Christmas erupts, help us to let go of the busyness that fills our minds and refocus on what really matters in this season. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he came for each one of us. Thank you for his life and death, for a way out of our sin-streaked lives, for forgiveness and assurance of eternal life with you through him. Help us to grasp the enormity of these truths, which we so easily sing and speak about, but which cost Jesus so much. Give us revelation, Lord, and a deeper love and appreciation for you this year as we sing our carols and read familiar passages of scripture. Holy Spirit, come. Do a new work in us, we pray. Remembering that Jesus was born an outcast and refugee in weakness and frailty. We pray for those who have little cause for celebration this Christmas. We pray for the hungry and the homeless, the poor and the unemployed, the oppressed and the exploited, the lonely and the downhearted. Thank you for the work of the food bank here in God Manchester, for the generosity and kindness of local people, the Hammer, Cornerstone and other agencies reaching out to those in need. And we praise you, Lord, for the spirit of goodwill that Christmas often brings. Thank you for all the food parcels that will be delivered to families this week. May they be a source of joy, comfort and hope to those who receive them and a reminder that someone cares. We ask especially that the Christmas books will be read and that people will be alert to you speaking through them. And we pray too for the work of Amen Ministries and ask that the shoeboxes and the aid that has gone to Romania and Ukraine will be a real source of joy and encouragement to those who receive them. We pray for the sick and the dying, the sad and the bereaved at this time. We remember too victims of war and violence and all those whose lives have been shattered by tragedy and disaster. We especially pray that 2023 might see an end to the war in Ukraine and freedom again for that nation. We pray for protection, for fortitude and courage for those on the front line. We pray again, Lord, that you would change Putin or remove him from his position of power. We ask that you would draw near, especially near to refugees experiencing Christmas away from loved ones and homeland. Lord Jesus, you came to set people free. And we pray that you would come again to our world, bring light where there is darkness, reconciliation where there is division, comfort where there is sadness and turmoil, hope where there is despair, faith where there is doubt, and confidence where there is confusion. Lord, we ask that you speak powerfully through every Christmas service and activity in the next couple of weeks. 
and that people would be drawn to know you in deeper ways because of hearing about you in this season. May we all be your agents of hope and grace this Christmas. And may we use the opportunities we have to point our family and friends to you. Like the shepherds, may we be quick to tell others what we have seen and heard. And we echo the words of Psalm 126, Lord. Thank you, for you have done great things for us. And praise you for all the joy you bring to our lives. We have so much to praise you for. May we be a people who glorify you at all times and in every way. To the honour of your name and the extension of your kingdom. Amen. We're going to worship in song again. Beautiful carol, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Do stand. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine eyes. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadow put to fly Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee Thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You 
in one heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus death could not hold you the veil to before you you silence the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.
come let us adore him Christ the In the quietness of our hearts, Lord, we bring you our praise, our adoration, our worship. We adore you. Lord, thank you that you speak. You have spoken through your prophets in the past. You have spoken through your Holy Spirit, through the ages. You've spoken supremely in your Son and his coming. Thank you that you speak through your word. And we pray that as we hear your word read, and as Kevin brings your word to us, that you would speak again to our hearts and our minds and our lives. In Jesus' name. Good morning. It's lovely to see you all so far. Um, our reading is from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in, in her old age and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Uh, I chose the title for this talk before I watched the football last night. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what it was to you, whether it was a surprise or a shock or expected. So what is a surprise? It's, uh, according to a dictionary I looked at, it's an unexpected or astonishing event. Well, 
I say nothing about football, I'm not an expert. Sometimes surprises are very unwelcome. And that's what struck me as I read again some of the passage or passages around the birth of Jesus. Mary, for example, was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel understood that this was more of a shock than a surprise. Hence his words. Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. It comes as no surprise to me that she would be taken aback by this astonishing event. Here possibly was a young girl in her early to mid-teens, as yet unmarried, but engaged. The very thought of becoming pregnant was, I guess, far from her mind. Until then, as we understand her to have been a devout and godly young woman. Some of the older ones here amongst us will recall a time when it was shameful to be pregnant outside of marriage. Perhaps it may have happened in our own families. Tongues would wag, speculation would be rife, and life made uncomfortable for the girl concerned. Many a young woman would be sent away from home for the duration of the pregnancy. I wonder, is that why Mary went to visit Elizabeth? Mary would have been overwhelmed with this visitation and its news. Bewilderment at being the center of God's attention. Here she was, knowing about the Lord from teachers and family, brought up in a Jewish faith, and suddenly, in a trice, she begins a personal relationship with the Lord. Completely unexpected and something of a shock. Not the kind of surprise that everyone would welcome. Joseph obviously didn't. This from Matthew's account. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together... She was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Well, you might say, why divorce when they weren't married? Well, because a betrothal or engagement at that time was quite as serious as marriage. I'm old enough to remember that it could be equally serious in, in my lifetime, in our society. You could be sued for breach of promise, for breaking an engagement. A very serious commitment indeed, as it had been for Joseph. You'll note that in this passage he is referred to as Mary's husband. That's how serious it was. Who on earth has been interfering with Mary? More than a surprise when he heard the news. um, It shocked him to the core. But he still wanted the best for Mary. Just as well, an angel came to explain that it needn't be such a shock, but a lovely surprise. After he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph... Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. I would imagine it was still a bit difficult to take that in. These were fairly ordinary but godly people. They might be thinking, why should I be chosen for such a task? Why not someone from a royal or a priestly family? Well, those of you that know your Old Testament should have no difficulty with understanding that. Most of the kings of God's ancient people, Israel, were not what you'd call good people. Some of them were real baddies who wanted to do their own stuff. 
And the priests and religious leaders weren't a lot different. Think about how prophets were persecuted when they tried to bring God's word to the people, when they spoke truth to power. In my daily Bible readings, I've been looking at Jeremiah, and he was constantly in trouble for telling the truth. How could these authorities be trusted by God with his own son when they were motivated by personal ambition? As I think of Joseph, I think that on hearing that Mary was pregnant, he may well have regretted at first his decision to take her as his wife. Maybe he even thought that he had misjudged her character. Well, we haven't finished yet with shocks or surprises in that first Christmas. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. Scary stuff indeed. Well, some of you will know that I was once in farming. And I've been in fields at night many times to check on cows that were due to have a calf. You'd be shining your, trying to look for the cow with your torch and suddenly there would be a pair of eyes staring at you and it wasn't a cow. <laughs> what on earth was it? Well, it was probably a fox which was more disturbed about me than I was about it. But think about that. It gave me a shock to see a little fox's eyes in the distance. What about a suddenly a load of angels appearing? What would you think about that? What would you make of that? Oh, completely terrifying. And why to shepherds? Why not to some important person? Perhaps because it was so completely unexpected that they should be amongst the first to hear this astonishing news. We've already thought about the secular and religious authorities and what their at attitude might have been. And that's more than borne out by Herod's reaction when the wise men visited him. He set about killing innocent children. And the religious authorities? Well, later, we know that time and again they tried to undermine Jesus and eventually engineered his death on a cross. Back to the shepherds. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. For all the people. Today in the town of David a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The Lord. This reassurance brought them a measure of peace. And they hurried off to see this astonishing event. I wonder. Being you know, from, back, from a farming background. I wonder what happened to the sheep. They hurried off left them. Perhaps the angels kept watch. So great was the excitement of the shepherds that they had no hesitation in leaving their sheep. Their fear turning to anticipation and joy. So we find that Mary was overwhelmed. Joseph had regrets. The shepherds were fearful. There will be some here this morning and some perhaps watching the broadcast too, who are not looking forward to Christmas this year. There are many things that can give us concern and trouble us, not least the cost of living at present, and that's not helped by the media constantly harping on about it. We know too that at, a, at Christmas, four fa poor family relationships can be exacerbated as we are living more closely together at holiday time. Perhaps some may have just lost jobs or are about to, may have lost loved ones. This would be perhaps the first Christmas without them. Or there are other pressures which make the whole thing seem overwhelming. Where is God in all of this, you might ask? Maybe some are living with regret, as was Joseph initially. Are you living with the consequences of wrong decisions made in the past? Is there guilt at broken or poor relationships that is weighing heavily on you? 
Perhaps in the past you have suffered much at the hands of others. You have felt demeaned and worthless. And that continues to dog you today. You might ask, why would God love me? I'm not worthy and he's holy. As you ponder the future, your past seems continually to drag you back. There's fear in your heart about how you will have the strength to cope, especially with all the problems that the world is throwing in your direction. Remember the shepherds. They were not held in high esteem by others, and yet God favoured them with the news of the birth of a saviour above those who considered themselves worthy. Their fears turned to joy and to trust. So Mary was overwhelmed and bewildered, but came to a place of peace and acceptance. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Joseph initially regretted his decision to marry Mary. A little tongue twister there. But he came to a place of understanding and acceptance. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. The shepherds were fearful, but came to a place of joy and amazement. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one, oh, the angels weren't looking after the sheep. I wonder who was. <laughs> the angels left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one, oh, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which, which were just as they had been told. I wondered what was common in, to all three instances and what could help us today. Well, each recognized that God was present with them, be it through angels or a dream. They heard, they all heard God speaking to them, and that surely says something about God's character more than theirs. They felt themselves too ordinary or unworthy to hear from him. In fact, it was totally unexpected that they would hear anything except through a priest or a rabbi, perhaps. But God was and is interested in all people. I don't care who you are what you think about yourself. God is interested in you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. He loves all people, however unlovable they feel themselves to be. All the characters in our story would have had an image, an understanding of what God was like. And through these events, that understanding was shattered and dramatically replaced. I wonder what is your image or understanding of God. Do you think yourself unworthy of his love? Do you think your problems not worthy of his attention? Take time today to let him come to you and make himself known to you afresh. The other thing that they had in common is that they knew it to be God speaking and all responded positively. Mary, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Joseph, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife and the shepherds. 
Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. What will be your response to God speaking to you today? You might not have heard his voice quite so dramatically as in the events that we've thought about this morning. But he will have spoken. He will have spoken to you. I think of my own usual attitude to Christmas and as, as an example. Despite the love and care of my children and their families, I often found it to be a lonely and sad time and didn't look forward to it at all. This year is completely different. In, what are you laughing at? <laughs> In that at the beginning of the year, I was surprised... Close your ears, Dawn. I was surprised to feel a real nudge from God to take a particular course of action. Walking round to Dawn's for an evening together, I suddenly knew that I had to say something important to her. Imagine my surprise and her shock when I said, I think we should get married in the next six months. And, um, a real prompting from the Lord that we both acted on despite our astonishment. And he's given us the most wonderful gift of love and a life together. So Christmas this year, for both of us, is a time to look forward to despite all sorts of pressures. If I hadn't responded to that nudge, I'd still be lonely and sad. You're a sad old chap. You don't want to be a sad old chap. Listen to God. Listening to God and acting on what he says may not bring such a dramatic change to you, but there will be a peace that you have hardly known before. There will be assurance that he loves you and will hold you close, whatever you're facing. I've left a few words on the screen there, and I think it would be good to take a few moments in silence together and let him come to us in our need. Maybe there are things that you need to lay before the Lord before we take communion together shortly. Let's have some silence and wait upon the Lord. I'm sure he will come to us if that's what we want. Heavenly Father, thank you for the still amazing story that we've just heard about again. Thank you for showing us that in all the shocks of life you are present and, help, and can help us to see that the shocks after all can become a lovely surprise. Where we have bewilderment or regrets or are fearful, Lord, we look to you to come to us, to bring us that peace that we need, that faith in our bewilderment, and to deal with the sin of past mistakes. Father, help us to receive your love and your grace at this time. In Jesus' name, amen.
And so we come to this communion table. The word communion. To commune with somebody means to share deeply with them. And this table represents the deepest love and sacrifice that God could ever show us. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons and daughters, you and me, to glory. And the invitation is for those who know and love Jesus to come, to eat, to share, to remember, to commune with him at this table. The heart of the Christmas message is Emmanuel, God with us. And in this sacrament, we remember and thank God that he has come to be with us in the person of his son, Jesus. And we remember all that Jesus sacrificed in dying for us. But we rejoice too that he's risen from the dead. He is still with us by his spirit. He still speaks. And one day, he will come again. Father, thank you. Thank you that you've done for us what we could never do for ourselves. Thank you for all that Jesus sacrificed so that we might have life with you forever. Thank you for loving us that much. We bring you our worship and we offer you our lives again today. Amen. On the night before he was betrayed, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, a new agreement, a covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. If you know and love the Lord Jesus, take this bread this morning, remembering that Jesus' body was broken for you. I invite these servers to come forward. We'll take and eat as we receive. Thank you. Our musicians are going to play as well. Thank you. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way 
for my average wandering heart not because of who I am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done but because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind still you hear me when I'm calling Lord you catch me when I'm falling and you've told me who I am I am yours who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again who am I that the voice that come to see will call out through the rain and calm the storm in me not because of who I am but because of what you've done not because of what I've done but because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord you catch me when I'm falling and you've told me who I am I am yours I am yours Hebrews 9, it tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. We remember as we drink this wine that Jesus' blood was shed so that we, you and I, might be forgiven. <coughs> that we might be forgiven, that we can have a new start with the past put behind us. And each day, we can walk on in that forgiveness. That's something to celebrate this morning. And because of this shedding of blood, we can know that we are his. Praise God. So we're going to take the glasses and we'll drink together at the end. Thank you.
Let's thank him for his forgiveness and let's thank him for what it means to be his. We praise you, heaven-born Prince of Peace, and we hail you, Son of Righteousness. Thank you that you have brought light, life, and healing to us. And may we walk in the light of that newness of life. May we keep our eyes heavenwards as we wait for your coming again. Amen. We're going to end our service with a a fantastic hymn. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and darkness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, your love has come here to dwell. Let's stand, let's be joyful in him. So you'll recognise your tune when it gets going, it's Ode to Joy. There's a little reframe in the centre though, so we'll see how we go with that. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, dry the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the Forest, vale, and mountain.
invite you to stay and um, have refreshments afterwards. Um, please do um, mix and mingle and get to know each other, especially those uh, who we don't recognise, so or those we've not spoken to before. So um, if you'd like to have prayer, then come to the front row and somebody will come and pray with you. We'd be delighted. Do take these uh, invitations. Um, put them through doors in your neighbourhood. We've got plenty. Invite people. Um, prayerfully think about who you might uh, approach and bring along. And so let's make Jesus known this Christmas. Let's pray. God of hope, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into the world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand upon, be the centre, the focus of our lives always, and particularly this Advent time. Amen. Have a great week.